Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Pat Castles, running for State Representative, District 38. Welcome, Pat. Thank you very much for having me, appreciate it. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you're running for this office. Well, uh, as I said, my name is Pat Castles. I'm running in District 38, which uh, encompasses uh, Southwest Portland, all the way down to Lake Oswego. It's bounded on the east uh, with the Willamette River. And uh, roughly, uh, I, it's everything uh, east of uh, I-5, although uh, I actually live on the other side, on the west side of I-5. So that gives you an idea of uh, where I am. I'm a lifelong Oregonian. Uh, I was born here and I was raised here. I actually live a few blocks away from uh, where my parents raised me uh, in the Wilson area. Uh, I had a long uh, thought about politics of uh, Oregon, but I haven't been uh, as involved title insurance, and I also work for IBM briefly. Um, uh, so basically, uh, my motivation for running is that I've seen the uh, state of Oregon uh, take a fork in the road that uh, I don't think is beneficial or traditional to the state of Oregon. Uh, we've gone the road of, of high taxes, high regressive taxes that have hurt the poor and the middle class, and uh, it affects me, but it affects everybody uh, negatively. And I think we're out of control. Uh, there are three pillars to my campaign. One is the tax issue. Uh, another is the uh, competency issue. And uh, the third one, I would say, we need to have transparency in uh, state government, and it isn't always transparent. So those are kind of uh, my motivations, and there are other reasons, uh, very personal reasons, not to me, but uh, I'll probably mention that later when we get into some other substantive, substantive questions. But anyway, that's kind of where I am today. I have a Bachelor of um, Science degree from the University of Oregon in Political Science and a Master of Arts degree uh, from the uh, Portland State University uh, in Political Science also. So that's a little bit of my background and uh, my motivation and uh, why I think that I can uh, handle the job and, and do the job that uh, Oregonians expect. So what challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Well, uh, there are two competing challenges uh, that the state has to meet. One is the financial challenge, and uh, one is the human toll that the virus takes uh, on uh, Oregonians. And so there's some sort of a balance that Oregonians need to uh, reach on this issue. Uh, primarily, uh, I would like to see the governor uh, stop the uh, cap tax uh, in order to uh, give people a chance to uh, uh, survive uh, because many Oregonians are not able to um, uh, get by based even on the uh, $1,200 they may be receiving personally or other things that are that are happening uh, in the financial world. Uh, it's a major burden and the way you would fund that would be through the reserves that, uh, uh, that the state has. Uh, we need to take into account the human toll uh, that's going on silently. It doesn't end up in a hospital yet. Uh, suicide and and uh, anxiety and other problems uh, develop when uh, people are confined in quarantine and are not able to um, and are not able to uh, get out and uh, exercise their mind and their spirit 
uh, the way Oregonians do. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur next year. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? What I would like to see is a bipartisan commission formed that would oversee the process. Uh, we have the prospect uh, at, of a, another a congressional seat uh, coming up and uh, that will make it much more difficult to achieve a fair and balanced uh, process. Um, the worst case scenario would be that this would go into the court system and the courts would decide how things would be uh, done. And personally, I'd like to avoid that. It's uh, not good for anybody to have to go to court to determine fair boundaries for districts and conceivably another congressional district. What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not, and why? Uh, it's a tremendously poor idea, uh, and I'll tell you why it is. Um, first of all, it, it will not achieve any climate goal that is set. It will not influence Oregon's climate, even if it's implemented. It's simply uh, a way for uh, left-wing ideologues running the government to align themselves with um, green parties in Europe. It has nothing to do with actually changing the climate. Uh, it, is, it does have to do with taxing people. And it's, it's among the most regressive taxes because it, it uh, taxes, uh, taxes individuals uh, for some of the basic things that uh, we use. Uh, energy is uh, important in the transportation of drugs and food and uh, the livelihood of many people. And here's uh, where part of my motivation, I didn't mention this earlier, but part of my motivation was a story that I heard uh, from a woman, it was her life, uh, she was talking about. And uh, she said that uh, she and her husband had a small trucking business as she testified before the leg uh, legislative committee. And uh, she was told by the state that her husband uh, needed to, uh, or was gonna lose his uh, commercial driver's license. And uh, in the process of, of that, uh, they felt that uh, he was not ill in any way. Uh, they claimed that he had a thick neck and that uh, reflected some sort of a sleeping disorder. Uh, I believe the wife that he was not sick, but it was their life and their livelihood, as she explained. It wasn't just a job, it was, it was their life. So he consented to an operation that was supposed to solve the problem. And he had the operation, but 10 days later, he died of a blood clot. And as a result, uh, it threatened their business. But the wife was determined to carry on. And uh, so she wants to keep their trucking business going. But as she testified before the legislative committee, she uh, would not survive the taxes that were going to be placed as a result of the cap and trade because the uh, 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 price of fuel would be so high that she couldn't operate her business. And the, uh, yes. Thank you. That's about oh, okay. all we have time for. Oh. Was that the end of the story? Because, oh. well, just five the, seconds. Okay. Yes, it is. And so uh, anyway, that touched me very deeply. And I wanted to say that, uh, that those are the people that I want to help in the state of Oregon. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.